What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Nathan and on this planet we send it and if you saw the ending of my last video you know we're going to be installing an attic fan and I'm going to be honest I'm actually redoing the introduction because I'm going to be splitting this video into two parts um, and the reason why is because I'm wanting to, since I didn't see much information out there on this particular product out there on YouTube I want to go ahead and put those details that I was looking for into this video so it's going to be a little extra longer on the narration but anyways part one is going to be two parts we're going to basically cover the uh, problem and the unboxing and then we're going to go ahead and get right on into the installation and then in part two we're going to go ahead and cover post installation thoughts and then also um, how the product is working over the last few days and there might be a couple of anomalies in there so I just want to make sure I review the product for just a few more days to give you guys at least something that uh, makes sense and helps you determine whether you want to buy this product or not if you're thinking about buying this product but anyways I got a plan in place let's go ahead and send it all right, so we're going to be installing the Quiet Cool AFG SMTES 3.0 attic fan. Now, why am I installing an attic fan? Like I said, the problem that I'm trying to solve. Well, I need to just take a minute and highlight where I've been and where we are now with our house. So here in San Diego, a lot of homes that were originally built back in the 70s, which is what I have, wasn't uh, wasn't equipped with air conditioning. We still don't have air conditioning. So when we first got here. The, with just regular windows, nothing really, nothing, no energy efficiency applied to the house. It would actually get warmer in the afternoon inside the house than outside the house. And so it just made being in the house just unbearable. Opening up the windows, uh, we'd be opening them up, opening up the windows, it would be almost 90 inside the house and low 80s outside. So it was just kind of annoying. So we put some windows on. Now at least until about five or six o'clock, it'll stay cooler on the inside of the house than the outside of the house, so that helps. Well, unfortunately, after that point, it'll still be 84, 85 degrees on the inside of the house, potentially, and um, in the evening, it cools off into the upper 60s, maybe sometimes lower 70s. There are times that it doesn't cool off, really, uh, even into the 70s uh, when we have certain conditions, but that's sort of the anomaly, but it, it does happen once or twice a year. Um, however, so in order to combat that, in order to bring the air from outside into the house we then install the whole house fan which then um, basically sucks in the cool air from outside the house wherever we have windows um, open and then it exhausts into the attic so now we're at the point to where that actually helps a lot in the evening as long as it gets cool uh, as long as it gets cool enough in the daytime now the problem that we are having is um, at those times to where it does barely uh, cool off maybe into the upper 70s, sometimes the lower 80s, it just doesn't get much below there. Um, it still stays up and then kind of warm. So the goal then is the attic seems to, as I've watched consistently as I monitor it, the attic, it will be, if it's a, like today it was 87, 89 degrees outside, the attic was around 102, 103. And since the uh, insulation isn't the best in the attic, it's still some of that old old school stuff, it really, this upper floor really is sort of unbearable um, to kind of stay up there. So what I'm hoping is that, is that with this attic fan, what we'll be able to do is keep the upstairs cooler by bringing in air that's only 87, 88 degrees instead of, and, and keeping the attic maybe in the lower 90s instead of being in the lower 100s. So that's the goal. We'll see how that, we'll see how that plays out. And like I said at the intro, I'm gonna run it for a couple of days or maybe three days or so. We'll see how it helps because we're actually gonna have hot days for the next three, four days again. And so I'll be able to give you guys at least a pretty decent initial review on how that goes. All right, so that's the problem. Let's go ahead and move on into the unboxing. All right, now it's time to get into the unboxing part of it. Before we actually up, open up the box here and pull what's in here, I don't really think it's going to be that involved. I want to go ahead and throw up some photos here on the advertisement here on the box and also kind of to discuss, use that to discuss why I ended up picking this attic fan. I picked it because in its low operation, it's only running at 22 watts. And, I, and I'll have to double check, but I think it runs at around 1,200 uh, cubic feet per minute. And it moves that much air. It can go up to up as a, almost up to 2,800. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll take a look at the specs here when we open that up. But but that was one of the reasons why even on the low setting, uh, well on the low setting, it's only running at 22 watts. So that that, that was pretty cool. Um, I think another cool thing is that it is a smart uh, appliance. 
and so I'll be able to control it from my application. We'll, we'll see how user-friendly that is or not. I don't know. Um, and, and then also the other reason why I, I picked this up uh, was because it advertises as pretty easy to install. And I think if you already had a power outlet up there, it would be easy to install. I almost guarantee it. I don't have that. Um, so I'll go and, and uh, getting up into the attic, it is just not that fun um, for me. Um, but uh, all right, so now that we got the sort of reason on why I picked this particular model, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and open her up. Okay, so it comes with your owner's guide. Uh, let's see, it actually looks like it got a little bit more than just the owner's guide. Let's see what else is in here. It has some um, advertisement for some uh, additional products. And I think that's all the documentation we have here. Obviously we have the unit itself with the controlling, uh, with the controlling unit. And also then uh, what it has is uh, a large cable. And if I recall correctly, this is like a 20 foot cable or something. So along with that, we also have uh, these, uh, th this is, appears to be some cardboard, is gonna go around, is designed to go around it to just uh, minimize uh, the air, the unwanted air travel around the unit. Um, so that'll be for installation. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stop the video now. And I'm gonna go ahead and read through the documentation. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and pause for a second. Well, at least after a quick glance of the, the documentation here. I was looking to see if there was some specification table for this to go over the exact specifications. Um, but what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to uh, pause the video again and uh, pull it down and then I'll go ahead and, uh, and we'll cover that here in just a second. Okay, so the website of uh, the Quiet Cool website had the specifications, so we'll go ahead and cover those real fast. And if I can add this on, if I can uh, add this to the video, I'll go ahead and put it up now too, so you can read along with me. Uh, if not, we'll just go ahead and cover it. So in the low setting, it moves 1,337 cubic feet per minute. It does that at 22 watts, um, or at, it does that at uh, 0.34 amps. The medium setting, it moves 2,041 at 67 watts and it does and that the amperage is explicitly 1.03 amps and then at high setting 2801 that's 148 watts and that is only 2. Point, uh, just under 2.2 .2 amps all right so i'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll end the video for now tomorrow you're going to go ahead and see me that well on the next day you'll go ahead and see me tomorrow after i have a plan on how i'm going to set everything up in combination with my whole house fan all right i'll see you then all right good morning everybody it is the next day i'm actually trying to be a little bit quiet because my family is still sleeping and not up yet and uh, i do want to say today is september 11th and myself like i'm sure just about every one of you out there your lives changed on that and i think maybe next year uh I will do a video on where I was and everything and exactly how my life changed, but kind of want to get into that now because to be honest, when I think about it, it it's upsetting and I want to keep things kind of positive and on the up and up. And uh, But I do think it is important to remember. Um, so absolutely, um, I was thinking this morning where I was that day, as I'm, I'm assuming you guys probably were too. All right, but like I said, I want to keep things on the up and up. So I want to first discuss, and I don't know why this is a positive thing, but it is. I found out I went into this installation with an expectation that I am wrong. After reading the information, I was pleasantly happy to find I am wrong on this expectation that I had coming in. And let me show you exactly uh, what I'm talking about and why. This is going to be a pretty quick installation, I mean a demonstration, I'm just going to go ahead and plug this in, wait for the fan to kick on, hopefully it does given this temperature, and then I'm going to show you what's going on. Alright, so what I want to highlight is just which way the air is blowing. So it's being, the airflow is going this way, as you can see from the balloon. And there it goes. Why am I happy to see this? All right, I'm happy to see this because I'm going to go ahead and insert a page here, a picture of a page from the installation guide. And this page was actually the same exact page that was on my whole house fan. 
And when the installers came to install my whole house fan, they did not measure how much ventilation I currently have that my attic is capable of exhausting, given that we are going to be um, positively pressurizing the attic to make sure that it would be able to run efficiently. They did not take the measurements. So when I tried to use my whole house fan, the uh, the the air just wasn't, I wasn't able to use it to maximum uh, effectiveness. So now getting back to the attic fan, I thought that the I thought that uh, the attic fan actually would be doing something similar to of the whole house fan, which would be basically pulling in the cold air um, from outside and uh, blowing it into the attic. So I was concerned that I wasn't going to be able to run both of them at the same time. Well, like I said, I'm happy to say that I was wrong. I thought I saw it on a video, but I definitely looking at this thing, I'm flat out wrong. Um, and I'm happy to be wrong because that means I can run both of them at the same time. I don't have to do any sort of special, make sure you turn off the attic fan when you turn on the whole house fan. So anyways, I'm going to wait for the family to get up and then we're going to hop right up into the attic and go ahead and install this. It is the morning time and we are currently looking at the west facing side of my house and the bottom gable vent up there is actually the additional vent that I installed after the fact when I realized the installers of the whole house fan did not uh, do the correct ventilation calculations and so I had to add in uh, an additional gable on either side. So what you're going to see when we get in there to install is I'm going to be installing the attic fan on the top gable um, just so that it, again it just pulls the, since heat rises, it pulls the air from as high as possible and then that way on the, when it gets to the end of the day and it's at its hottest, uh, although it's going to be on the side where the sun is, it's going to be pulling in the cooler air from the other side, which is basically just an exact copy of, of what you see here, two gables, and uh, but just on the east side. So that'll be pulling in the cool air from that side and exhausting on the hot side. All right, in an effort to reduce the amount of work you have to do up in the attic, it's always a good idea to do as much as you can before you get up there. So what we're going to install right now is the vibration dampening pads and then also they can just highlight they came with the uh, screw bag uh, that uh, came with it so looks like the screws there's enough here to put a screw in either one of these holes on each two on each of these tabs in addition to the sound dampening and then also it has some smaller screws to hold in the cardboard so let's go ahead and put on the sound dampening now I forgot to check the instructions for doing it, but I, so I don't know if this is the way that's designed, but I put the pads, decided to put the pads upside down or basically so this rounded part is not where the screws are, uh, just so that the screws are not interfered with as they go in. I'm sure the screws could have gone through there just fine, um, but uh, I, I, I just chose to, and it could be erroneously chose to, decided to put those in this way. All right, so I'm getting ready to put you guys on time lapse as we go into the attic and install this. So I want to talk about the plan on what I'm going to do when I get up there so you'll know what I'm doing already. And I'm not because I don't want to have to explain everything while I'm in the attic. Again, just to reduce the work while it's up there on the attic. So I'm going to go up there and I'm going to install either one to two nails and basically hang the device up there so that it's uh, sitting where I want it to be. And then I'm just going to go ahead and bolt in the holes. But then after that, and I'm going to do that right now, then after that I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, figure, identify where I want to pull power from. And if I can, I want to, um, uh, I'm going to, make, I'm not sure exactly how we're going to balance it. I'm going to get up there and see exactly how it is, but I'm probably going to take advantage of this long uh, cable or not. Maybe I'll just uh, um, bring the power all the way over to the unit and just put the plug right there. We'll see. Well, I, when I get up there, I'll assess the situation and see where we're going to go from there. All right, let's send it.
All right. Thank you. All right, so that's gonna go ahead and wrap up part one where we covered the problem I was trying to fix, the uh, unboxing, and then also the installation. And I'm gonna have this video out to you guys by tomorrow, Wednesday. So for part two, we're gonna go ahead and cover uh, the installation lessons learned, because there were a few, and then we're also gonna go ahead and cover how effective this unit is if any. So we'll have that out to you by this weekend. So part two will be out either Saturday, Sunday at the absolute latest. But anyways, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy this video and I'll see you on the next one.